Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. We've got actually kind of a exciting double review today. Um, we're going to be looking at the Ode Pro KL62 Plus lighting system. And we've got it paired up. Check this out. This is the AEA Element 22 caliber PCP rifle. This thing is sweet. Just a quick note for you about the video today. It is going to include some pest control. Not a lot, but some. It'll be towards the end, and if you don't like that sort of thing, um, this is probably not the video for you. But this is a really good hunting rifle, and this is a really good hunting light, and they go great together. So it just made sense to get you an opportunity to see a couple of those shots on film. Let's start out by talking about the KL62 Plus. Um, this is a three color light. Unlike the KL52 Plus, which I have reviewed in the past and very much like, this light allows you to switch between the color modes without taking the light apart and without dropping in what they call a pill. So on the 52, you have <clears throat> not only white light, red light, and green light, but you also have the opportunity to put an infrared pill in. Um, so if you're using night vision, that's a really good choice. This one has three different types of light, red, white, and green. And we're going to try and show you um, how well it works because it's a really good light. Uh, as far as what comes in the box, you get the usual accessories. I'll throw a picture of uh, what's inside the case. It is a nice plastic case, um, and if you uh, if you want to put stuff into storage that way, you've got it as an option. The light itself is in there. You get two batteries, a charger, you get a tail cap switch, you get um, uh, actually a mount, which I used when I went out uh, hunting. Um, I was in a barn, it was pretty dark, and I needed just... I, need, I needed a bright enough light to illuminate into some of the dark recesses and corners. Um, and this works phenomenal for that. And I'll show you a little bit later some outdoor stuff. We had a crazy, crazy foggy night. Um, and I was able to get some pretty good footage that will show you the difference between the beam on the 52 and the 62. The KL62 Plus is up top. It's got a slightly different green color cast and just a little bit wider beam. Both of these are on maximum um, maximum spotlight. The KL52 Plus is on the bottom and you can see that the beam holds just a little bit tighter. It's also just a little bit darker green. We've got uh, an extraordinary amount of fog. Um, you can barely see, well right now actually you can see about 15 yards and that's about it. But it's a good, uh, good demonstration of what the beams look like. Again you have the KL62 Plus on the bottom. At short distances, this tree is, well, it's terminating on the tree. Um, that's 15 yards away. And the 62 brightens the spot where the 52 is hitting. And it's just a little bit wider at that distance, a little bit wider of a beam. Very similar units. Uh, but just a little bit different. Um, but the, that mount really is nice. You can just mount right on the barrel uh, of your rifle or whatever, and now you've got access to a, a green light or red light for hunting, depending on your application. The AEA Element. Um, I've got one here in 22 caliber. Uh, so here's the biggest thing about this gun, and it's it's you're just going to have to take my word for it. 
This thing is crazy, ridiculous light. It, it's, it's like carbon fiber. The only places where there's metal are places that I assume they looked at it and said, hey, we need some metal in there. Like, you know, the air cylinder. Uh, the barrel shroud is carbon fiber. It does have some baffles up front. I've put on a Donnie FL Tatsu. Uh, it really brings the muzzle report down. Because it's so lightweight, because it's made so much of carbon fiber, um, and you'll notice this in the video, you will hear a ping when the gun goes off. Uh, the moderator doesn't touch that, but because you moderate it, you wind up noticing that ping just a little bit more because the muzzle blast is so quiet. And to me, that's what matters because it's the muzzle blast that is going to scare off the things you're trying to shoot in the event that you need a follow-up shot. Oh, by the way, follow-up shot, magazine fed. Um, unlike a lot of AEA's other magazines, which are plastic, this magazine is actually some sort of alloy body. Um, it's shaped differently than the other magazines that AEA puts out. Um, and it, it really fits in. Uh, I heard some reports from the original ones that kind of like it was a little sloppy and maybe was prone to falling out. I'll tell you, mine snaps right in. There's a ball bearing detent right in there, and then two channels, bottom and top, that it goes into, and it, it just snaps right in. And I haven't had hundreds of rounds. I haven't had one problem. I haven't, I haven't had one magazine malfunction at all. It's a really nice unit. Um, so let's, <clears throat> let's really dive into features. Like I said before, you have a carbon fiber shrouded barrel. There are baffles up front. If you get the adapter to put your Donny FL on, Donny FL does make an adapter, you may want to play with your uh, your stack, if you will, of these, these baffles. I found that there were ways I could stack them that improved accuracy and ways I could stack them that detracted from accuracy. So individual results may vary there. You have this front cap o-ring sealed but that's where your fill probe comes in it does come with a probe you got your air gauge there I know nobody's favorite spot but it works um, I will say this about AEA's fill probes they uh, they come pre-milled with a foster fitting in them so you get the male foster fitting uh, you don't have to screw around with getting one of those screw on end caps what you get in the box is all you need and you can swap it from tank to tank or from tank to compressor, or whatever your airful uh, situation is. Um, this one does fill to 3600 PSI. It's not a huge tube, um, and this is an unregulated gun. So I'm filling up at the end of about two magazines. You could certainly get more shots out of it at that point, but that's when I'm filling up. Because um, what I want to do is try and keep the consistency as as tight as possible um, with that said let's take a look at this uh, shot string I did a uh, fill up to 3600 psi and then I ran a shot string of the first 10 shots uh, off the gun remember it's not regulated so that's not bad at all for an unregulated rifle um, as you'd expect from a PCP you know there's there's no recoil um, and uh, let's talk for a little bit about accuracy. So what I did as I set this up is I popped a UTG red dot on there. Okay, just this little guy. I figure I want to keep this set up lightweight. That's what it's intended for. It's a lightweight, close-up um, shooter. And uh, so here is what accuracy looks like at 25 yards. 25 yards with an unregulated air rifle using a red dot. Uh, both of these groups are under one inch. I don't really expect all that much more. If you wanted to push the accuracy on this, put some kind of optic on it. I'm just saying that to me that kind of spoils... I mean, look at this. I can hold it up like... I'm holding it in my forefinger and thumb. This thing is so light. I can lift it over my head with two fingers. 
that's how light this is. It's all carbon fiber. It does have collapsible or foldable buttstock, so you can even shrink it down a little bit more. And then we get into some interesting features in the fire control group. You've got a pretty standard setup, fire and safe right there, obviously your trigger's down here. But if you notice here, you have the bolt up top, and then you have this little lever down here. What this allows you to do in, in the field, let's say you have loaded the gun, right? So you have one in the, in the barrel, ready to fire, but you want to decock it. You can decock it, and this becomes your decocking lever, this lower lever. Not only can you decock it, but you can re-cock it by pulling this back. So I've, I've got a round in, I decide to decock it, now I want to fire, I can pull that back and it's ready to go. Pretty cool. I want to decock it, right? I hold this back, pull the trigger, let it go forward. Now I'm not constantly cycling the bolt and running the risk of double, triple, quadruple feeding it. Uh, it's actually pretty ingenious, pretty, pretty well thought out, um, and it works really well. Um, it does have some adjustability, um, easy outside adjustability. You do have a knob here that connects to your transfer port. So to make the adjustment, you actually loosen it on the back side, and then adjust it on the other side, tighten it back up, um, and I, uh, I found it a little hot for my liking. I like to shoot the Hades pellet. That was my goal, is to set this up for the Hades. It was shooting a little hot out of the box for my liking. Um, so I went ahead and just dialed ever so slightly back on that transfer port to I got um, to that velocity I was really looking for, kind of around that sub 900 feet per second um, area. Because I think before that, don't quote me on this, but it was it was cresting a thousand uh, with the Hades to start. So a little back on the transfer port, and um, really really happy with with where it's shooting. So to give you an idea of what the trigger pulls like, uh, I've got my trigger gauge here. Just take a little test. 1 pound 1 1.9 ounces. One pound 2.7 ounces. one pound three ounces so right in that one pound two ounce range not too bad I think we should take it out and see what it can do in a barn with some pigeons how about you
So let's talk a little bit more about the uh, KL62 Plus. It's a nice, well-built aluminum light. You've got a switch right here that allows you to switch between the white, red, and green lights. Very easy, very positive click. The focus of the beam is at the front of the bell. goes from a nice flood to a really tight spot. Um, I've used it out to 100 yards and it pretty easily illuminates targets. I've set it up with a scope um, and been able to spot deer at 100 yards no problem through a scope. And that's with the green light. Um, the white light is more powerful than the green light and, uh, and I think the red light to me looks a little more powerful. It just depends on what you like to use. I tend to use a green light as opposed to a red, but I think the red has a little bit more output. Um, if I'm looking at the specifications, um, the uh, red is at rated at 120. Oh, well, it says the green is rated at 131, but the white is rated at 540. I'll throw the specs up um, so you can take a look at that. But I find this to be a really well-made light that's very easy to use. Um, so this is one of the other cool things about it. And I'm going to try and try and show this to you as best I can. The back tail cap actually operates as a dimmer. So depending on your situation, you can change the intensity of the beam and you can do that whether you're in green mode, white mode, or red mode. It's interesting to me that the camera really, um, really thinks that the red mode is quite bright and it tends to kind of blow it out a little bit. Um, even though it's rated at lower lumens. So your tail cap is not only on off, but you can see it rotates to give you that range of adjustment which is really pretty cool and uh, honestly more useful than I thought it would be. So would I recommend the uh, Ode Pro KL62 Plus? Yeah, I would, absolutely. Um, you can get them on Amazon. They're not ridiculously expensive. You get adjustability of the intensity of the beam as well as the size uh, of the beam. Um, it's great for hunting applications and, and a good general purpose flashlight. Um, it comes with two good batteries, so there's no reason to, to not have it um, charged up and ready to go. And if it dies on you, you got a spare battery, which is nice. Um, the Ode Pro batteries seem to be a better quality than some of the generic ones that are out there. Um, I've, uh, because I've had the, the KL52 for a while, um, I've charged and, and discharged those batteries on a lot of cycles, and I've never had a problem. Um, would I upgrade to this one uh, if I had this one? Well, you can never have too many flashlights, so I don't know that I'd say upgrade. I'd say maybe add. Um, I have this one set up in green. Uh, it's nice to be able to switch this one back and forth. I may switch this over and start using this as my primary uh, infrared light. Not 100% sure on that, um, but I'm thinking about it. I think if you want the ultimate flexibility and dedicated heads, you know, this is the way to go. I think if you want a little bit of flexibility, um, I would could seriously consider this one. They're both good lights, and I have no hesitation uh, recommending them. 
Back to the element though. Okay, the element in the room. Um, what do I think of this? This is a phenomenal gun um, for what it is. I'm not going to take it out and shoot 100 yard bench rest. I'm not using it to take, you know, 75 yard shots on sparrows and starlings. This is a carry around, close up, keep it by the back door, put it in your truck, walk around with it all day. Like if you were in an all day walking around and there might be some squ squirrels to shoot kind of situation, this would be a phenomenal gun to go hunting around with. It's so light and you can make it so compact really has a lot going for it um, it's with a red dot okay as an unregulated gun it's one inch groups out at 25 yards and I'm sure I could push that a little bit further um, and that's uh, that's kill shot on a squirrel as far as I'm concerned with the Hades pellet um, decent on the noise side you will hear and you probably have by now heard some of that twang in the video um, by the way the the Filming we did out there, that was with a Tacticam. Um, kind of just added onto the side, so it was giving you that first person view. Um, keep in mind that the Tacticam is physically connected to the action of the rifle, so it's going to absorb a lot of that twang noise uh, because it was physically connected to the gun. You, it, it doesn't seem that loud to the ear, uh, but it certainly shows up in the video. What you really don't hear is much of the report. I mean, you can, you can hear the shot break, you can hear that twang, and you can still hear the thwack of that Hades pellet hitting the pigeon. And that's, uh, that's what I like to hear. Um, if you're looking for one of these, I would check out either the Pellet Shop or Utah Air Guns. I think they're both carrying them. Um, and last I checked, they had both of them in stock. Uh, it comes in different calibers. I like the 22. Um, I think it's a great, uh, great caliber for this kind of gun. I hope this video has been of some use to you, um, and I do appreciate the positive comments. Until the next one, folks, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.